Hi, I hope you're doing well. As I'm filming this, I am currently um, in Costa Rica and I just woke up from a very long nap. I have been wanting to film this video for a very long time, but I just had to wait for the right moment for my heart to be in the right place. As you guys may know, I usually post my videos on Thursdays and for the first time in years, Pride Month or June 1st starts on a Thursday. So I decided that I will be uploading this video then. But the time this video uploads, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm probably gonna forget I even made it. I'm probably gonna forget it's even Pride Month in general because I will be taking summer classes, but um, I am ready to talk about this. So I have always been comfortable with my sexuality for as long as I can remember, but it's also been very confusing. It's been a very confusing and difficult journey for me as well. In this video, I'm going to um, discuss how I came to the conclusion and the things that I learned and how I learned to love myself for who I am. So like most other children, I've always known that I was different from other kids, but it wasn't until I was nine or 10 years old that, that, that I discovered that there was actually a word for it. One day my grandmother was watching the news and she heard of, and she was explaining to me the controversy behind gay marriage and legalizing gay marriage. I didn't know, because I've never seen two men together on TV, I've known, I've always known that I um, could have possibly liked men, but I could have never seen myself in those situations, which is why representation is important in the media. But because my grandmother and the rest of most of my family wasn't very supportive of those types of things, I spent most of my teenage years, or maybe not teenage years, but my I spent most of my childhood hating myself, hating myself, praying it would go away, praying it was all a fluke, praying, praying that somebody would come around and save me and change it all or something. And I remember when times got so dark, I was so close to either running away or committing suicide. And nobody deserves that. I don't think anybody deserves to ever feel that way. As I've said before, deep in my heart, I've always felt different from other guys, um, not just from my interests, but from like, everything in general i feel like i did not have a whole lot of stuff in common with like the common straight guys when we're talking about like who we find attractive why we find them attractive after going through so much i have came to the conclusion that i'm pansexual how did i come to this conclusion well because i am considered feminine most people would consider me or assume that i'm gay which is fine there's nothing wrong with being gay but I've always felt like I was blind to the gender. I don't, I never really, gender never really mattered to me because I cared about the person at their very core. However, what really set things in stone for me was when I liked, I had romantic feelings for another guy for the first time when I was 13. Now that I, I feel like this was so serious for me back then, but now um i am now able to like actually really really talk about it um back when i was 13 i was very very much borderline in love with my best friend um, his name was diego yes the aftermath was not fun but i would not trade that experience for the world because at its core i needed it I needed it. That experience shaped shaped me into the person I am today. I've liked girls in the past, but at that moment, that was the moment I realized that it really does not, the gender really does not matter to me. However, in this con in this time period, like not just in my life, but I'm pretty sure like in the world in general, um, the concept of there being like other gender other genders or sexualities besides gay bisexual or um, 
street was very new. So I didn't even know there was a word for this. At the same time, I'm not very big on labels. So if somebody referred to me as gay, queer, bisexual, I wouldn't get offended by it because I'm just not into labels. But in the same, in the same respect, I feel like labels are important so other people can understand you, which is why I am making this video too. When I liked Diego, it was, I was 13 years old. I was around 12, 13 years old. I was very new about this. And just to be clear, I was never really, the only people I was ever really in the closet around was my family, if I'm being honest with you. And I only say, I only put that disclaimer out there because personally, I never felt like I had to come out the closet because I never felt like I owed anybody answers. And I would tell people that I'm straight. It's because it's it's something that I would do rooted at, out of safety. I will also used to say that rooted in the principle of it's none of your business anyway. So ultimately, I never felt the pressure to come out because if you assumed that I was straight, basically anything that is not solely my sexuality, um, then you're just straight up wrong. I'm not, I'm not gay, I'm not bisexual, I'm not queer, or whatever you wanna call it because of my earrings, or the fact that I wear skirts sometimes, or the fact that I'm feminine. It's, I'm only like this because I am okay with the opposite sex. I am comfortable. I don't care about gender. I care about the person at its very core, and I'm proud to say that I'm pansexual. Before I conclude this video, I would just want to finish the story of how I became comfortable with my sexuality. I became comfortable with my sexuality. I was in middle school, and I met this girl that I'm no longer friends with, but she changed my life forever. Her name was Madison. When I met Madison, when I was, I met Madison when I was in middle school and she was always very much like rainbows, ponies, like everything. Like I remember first meeting her or seeing her from afar and being like, wow, like I want to be this girl so badly. Like I want to be, I want to be that person that's just like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm comfortable with myself. If you don't like it, that's on you, not me and things like that. When I met Madison, I was very insecure. I was scared. I was I was pretty depressed, not just because of my home life, but because of like my personal life. I was I just did not like myself. I feel like a lot of people hated me and the homophobia that I experienced on a daily basis in middle school would get to me all the time. But when I met Madison, Madison was so unapologetically herself that it rubbed off on me and it just never like came off. Like to this day, like I've never even questioned it. And when we became close friends, she was my anchor. She was my anchor and she was, she was the person that, that told me and that reassured me that I, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be comfortable with myself. I, I am not an accident. I am somebody that is worth life. I'm everything and more and I deserve to be treated that way regardless of my sexuality. And although we're not friends anymore, I desperately wish I could be that person for somebody else because every person in the LGBT community that sees another person struggling, they need that person. They may not say anything, but like they need it. I remember I was so close. I was so close to killing myself. I would constantly make myself feel small for people that don't even like me. And it's not fair. It wasn't just fair to those people sh showing that it's okay to treat other people like this, but it wasn't fair to myself because I was constantly hiding who I am from the world and from myself. And life is so short. Life is so short and it's way too short to be pretending to be somebody you don't even like. I remember thinking to myself in middle school, right before I met Madison, that if I can't be myself, if this is the life I have to live stuck in a box, then I'd rather not live at all. And I know that I'm not alone. If you ever feel alone, please reach out. 
if you ever feel feelings of inadequacy or worthlessness because of your sexuality, I'm here to tell you that it's not going to last forever and that things will get better. You are deserving of life. You are deserving of safety. You are deserving of everything. Everything that straight people get. And you are deserving of all the good things that are coming to you, regardless of how other people make you feel. I decided to formally make this video though, um, because I want it to be clear. I never have made my sexuality clear on the internet or in public or really to actually nobody in general. Like I've always just like lived my life letting people label me instead. Here's the thing, Here, here's, here's the key to self-acceptance um, in my book. You have to love yourself. You have to love yourself. You need, to, you need to get to the point where you love yourself so much that the lack of love from other people doesn't even phase you. You literally, when you love yourself that much, you don't even care what other people think. It does not matter who it is. It could be your own parents. Yes, the journey to get there is going to be painful and it's going to be hard, but I promise you it will get better and it's not worth ending your life over. I am here to set the record straight. I am... I am sexual. Thank you so much. Well, now that it's like getting like super dark, uh, thank you so much. Uh, happy Pride Month. And <laughs> you guys have a great day. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I have such a loving community that I'm, I was able to be open to.